Hey gang, welcome back to another video. In this edition of Derek Obsesses Over an Inconsequential Movie Prop That's Only On Screen For A Few Seconds, I'll be tackling one from one of my favorite movies, Back to the Future 2, but this time with a little help from my friends at Anchormake. So let's hop in the DeLorean and get right to it. I know I tackle a lot of projects that start with 3D prints and 3D printers seem overwhelming, but Anchormake just sent over their entry-level printer, the M5C, and I thought this project would be a perfect test for the newest addition to their lineup. It's a high-speed printer that uses one-click operation and is geared towards makers who may not have a ton of experience with 3D printing. So with the printer assembled, it was time to get down to 3D modeling Doc's binoculars. As usual, I found some high-resolution images of the original prop online with measurements and was able to translate them into a 3D model that I could print. And once my model was complete, it was just a matter of dragging the files into the AnchorMake Slicer software to prepare it for printing. And after a bit of processing, it was ready to go. But before I get to printing, I'm going to fire up the AnchorMake app and run auto bed leveling before I print to ensure a good bond to the build plate. Getting this first layer right can really make or break your print. So to have leveling completed automatically is a real plus and removes a lot of the guesswork. With the auto bed leveling complete and a single click of the button, the M5C was off and running. The AnchorMake M5C also has app controls, which lets you track your print progress, make adjustments like nozzle height and speed, and you can also start or stop your print remotely, which is nice if you keep your printers in a different room. You can also set three custom functions for the button with single click, double click, or three second press. I left the printer to do its thing, and after a few hours I got a notification on my phone that the print was done and I could pull it from the printer to get down to painting. I'll start with a bit of black spray paint and some spray primer. These interior parts printed really cleanly and don't need any surface prep before painting, so I'm just going to paint those black. Off camera, I did a bit of sanding where the binocular frame had support material, so I'm going to hit that piece with a few coats of filler primer to give it a nice even surface. While the frame was drying, I flipped over the interior pieces to finish them off. Now that the frame was dry, I could give it a light sanding to smooth it out even further. First with 220 grit sandpaper, and then with 320 grit. That should give me a sufficiently smooth surface for the final paint layer. It was hard to tell from the reference photos if this part was gray or some kind of metallic, so I'm going with something a little less temperamental and chose a medium gray spray paint. and then I could move it to a hook to dry. While I wait, I'm going to get started on some of the smaller parts of this prop. I've cut some clear acrylic rounds for the lenses, and will use some CA glue to adhere them in place. It's important when dealing with CA glue and acrylic that you don't apply too much glue, like I just did, since the glue can leave a bit of a haze on the acrylic, which happens as a result of a chemical reaction between the glue and the amino acids in your fingerprints. If I had to do it again, I'd either make the rounds larger or use a different type of glue. Next up is this nose piece, which I cut from an aluminum skinned acrylic. In the photo, there are some tiny hex head screws, which I'll need to install. Thankfully, the printer came with a small tool kit that had the exact size Allen key for the job. With that out of the way, I could start with assembly. So I grabbed the frame and the interior pieces and friction fit them into place. Because of the extra layers of paint, these were a tighter fit than expected. But I found that by bowing them a bit, I was able to set them in place and as they relaxed would lock into position. I also installed the lenses, but well, you know. 
With all my interior pieces installed, I could move on to the nose cone, which will get glued to the aluminum piece and then glued to the notch in the frame. Then it was on to the rear acrylic panels, as well as another aluminum skinned piece, and they'll all get glued in place as well. Next to do is to add in the white bumper around the outside edge of the frame. These pieces are straight off of the printer with no additional prep, since they already look like injection molded plastic and they'll get glued to the frame along with the small switch details. The final detail is the addition of these top colored bars. I'll start by gluing one of the smaller pieces in place, then I'll position the middle bar and use a temporary piece as a stand-in to get the spacing right, before gluing the middle and finally the last small bar in place. And with that, these binoculars are ready to go back to the future. The 3D printers are getting faster and more user-friendly by the second, and the AnchorMake M5C definitely accomplishes both of those things. I'd like to thank AnchorMake for sponsoring this video, and I'll leave a link down in the video description if you'd like to check out their entire line of products. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something.